All right, this is unit three, lesson one, graphing polynomial functions. So we're in a brand new unit. It's all going to be about polynomial functions. So the lesson essential question is, how do the key features of a polynomial function help you sketch its graph? So at the end, we'll be able to predict the behavior of polynomial functions. Um, so the vocabulary for this lesson, we actually have quite a few. Degree of polynomial, leading coefficient, polynomial function, relative maximum, relative minimum, standard form of a polynomial, and turning point. Okay, so. Example number one. All right, so for this, we're actually gonna be classifying polynomials. So how can you write a polynomial in standard form and use it to identify the leading coefficient, the degree, and the number of terms? So I have 4x minus nine plus two x cubed. So basically the idea behind this is we're just putting it in order. So recall that a polynomial is a monomial or the sum of one or more monomials called terms. So the degree of a term with one variable is the exponent of that variable. So the degree of negative 4x is 1 because x is raised to the first power. The degree of 9 is 0. There's no variable there. And the degree of 2x cubed is 3. So for the leading coefficient, so the leading coefficient refers to the non-zero factor that is multiplied by the greatest power of x. So in this case, my greatest x value is x cubed. So it has to be 2. That's the leading coefficient. The degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of any of the terms. This is a polynomial of degree three, also known as a cubic polynomial. X cubed. Terms of polynomial. The polynomial has three terms, so it's called a trinomial. So one, two, three. Okay. So standard form shows any like terms combined and the terms by degree in descending numerical order. Standard form of this polynomial is two X cubed minus four X plus nine. All right, so let's try it out. What is each polynomial in standard form and what are the leading coefficient, the degree, and the number of terms of each? So I'm gonna look at this polynomial. I have two X minus three X to the fourth plus six minus five X cubed. So my biggest value is the X to the fourth. So that goes first. Then I'm going to do the X cubed. So minus five X cubed plus two X plus six. So four, three, one, there's no X squared. And then six is a coefficient. So my leading coefficient is negative three. The degree is four and number of terms is one, two, three, four. Okay. Coefficient negative three, degree of four, terms four. Okay, I can do the same thing for this one. X to the fifth plus two X to the sixth minus three X to the fourth minus eight X plus four X cubed. So I have this X to the sixth, that's my largest, to two X to the sixth plus X to the fifth minus three X to the fourth plus four X cubed minus eight X. Sometimes I find it helpful that if I have this written down on a piece of paper, I can actually cross out the terms as I go. So I do 2x to the 6th, I cross that term out since I already have it down. x to the 5th, cross that term out. Negative 3x to the 4th, then 4x cubed, and then negative 8x. My leading coefficient is 2. My degree is six and my number of terms, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right, example number two, understand end behavior of polynomial functions. How do the sign of the leading coefficient and degree of a polynomial affect the end behavior of the graph of a polynomial function? So if it has an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient. Okay. So n behavior is similar to a linear parent function f of x equals x. 
as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. So that's for an odd degree. So like cubed is an odd degree, and it has a positive leading coefficient, okay? Starts down here. So as x approaches positive infinity, it's going up. So as I go this way, it goes up. As I go towards negative infinity, as x approaches negative infinity, so if, as I'm going this way along the graph, this way along the graph, you can see that x is going down. Okay, so that's going towards negative infinity. So as my x is increasing, my y values are increasing. So y is going towards positive infinity. As x is decreasing, y is also decreasing or going towards negative infinity. Okay, so for an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, it looks very much like x squared, okay? So n behavior is similar to quadratic functions. So as I approach, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity, okay? So as I get bigger negative x values, I get higher y values. Quadratic, okay? Odd degree and negative leading coefficient. Okay? So n behavior is similar to f of x equals the neg is negative x. So this line here, so it has a negative slope. So as x approaches positive infinity, so as I get bigger x's, my y values decrease, they go to negative infinity. As x approaches my larger negative values or negative infinity, my y values are increasing or going towards positive infinity. Okay? For even degrees and negative leading coefficients, it's like a negative quadratic. So as I approach positive x values, x towards infinity, my y values are decreasing, so they're going towards negative infinity. As I'm going towards negative infinity on the x-axis, I'm going towards negative infinity on the y-axis as well. All right, so use the leading coefficient and degree of the polynomial to determine the end behaviors of each graph. So I have this very long equation, okay? I don't care about any of it except this first term right here, 2x to the sixth. That's all I care about. My leading coefficient is 2, and that's even. I'm positive. And then my degree, which is 6, is also even. So this tells me even, even, it's going to look like a quadratic equation. So that means as x approaches infinity, y also approaches infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity. So my y values will approach positive infinity. So again, negative 5x cubed plus 8x plus 4. My leading coefficient is negative 5, so that's a negative. Okay. My degree is 3 and that's odd. Okay, so this is going to look like a, it's going to have a negative slope. So as my x goes towards infinity, my y values are going to go towards negative infinity. And as my x values go towards negative infinity, my y values are going towards positive infinity. So x approaches negative infinity, my y values are increasing. So again, it looks like this type of slope. Okay. So if I'm going this way, my x values are getting are negative, my y values are positive. So as x increases, y decreases, and as x decreases, y increases. All 
All right, example number three, graph a polynomial function. So consider the polynomial function f of x equals negative 0.5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2. How can you use a table of values to identify key features and sketch a graph of the function? So I can make a table of values and identify intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. So I made a table, negative 3, negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So from negative 11, so this gives me negative 11.5, this gives me 6, so those are increasing values. At negative 1, I get 4.5, that's a decreasing value. 0 to 2, that's decreasing, and then I go from 2 to 4.5 to 6, which are increasing, and then back down from 6 to negative 11.5, so that's decreasing. So points where the function values change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa are turning points. So this function has approximately turning points, approximate turning points when the value of x is between negative 2 and negative 2, so somewhere in here, uh, negative 1 and 0, and 1 and 2. So this is a polynomial function with an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, so both ends of the graph will trend towards negative infinity. So I can draw this graph, boom, 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 like this. Okay, so both my endpoints are going towards negative infinity. Here's a turning point here, turning point here, turning point here. Graph those points. Okay. The point where the function has the least value over as interval is a relative minimum. So if I look at this, the lowest point is right here. That's a relative minimum. This function has a relative minimum near 0, 2. A point where the function has the greatest value over the interval, so up here, okay, is a relative maximum. This function has two relative maximums near negative 2, 6, and 2, 6. I can consider the polynomial function f of x equals negative 0.5x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2. How can you use the graph to estimate the average rate of change over the interval negative 2, 0? So I can recall that the average rate of change is f of b minus f of a over b minus a for two points on a graph a, f of a, and b, f of b. So the average rate of change equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So f of b is 2, f of a is 6 over 0 minus negative 2. I substituted in uh, negative 2, 6, and 0, 2. Okay. So negative 2, 6 was a point that was on the graph. And 0, 2 was also a point that was on the graph. Okay. So I got these points right here from the negative 2, 0. So I substituted in negative 2 for this for the x value up here, which gave me a y value of 6. And I substituted in 0 up here as well, which gave me a y value of 2. That's where those came from. Okay. So equals negative 2. So the average rate of change over the interval negative 2, 0 is negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. Consider the polynomial function f of x equals x to the fifth plus 18x squared plus 10x plus 1. Describe the key features of the graph in the box below, then use the pen tool to complete the table of values and sketch a graph of the function. So I can see that it is an odd leading coefficient, and it is, well, it's a positive leading coefficient, positive leading coefficient, um, and an odd degree. So graph will trend from so when x is going towards infinity, y will also go towards infinity, and when x goes towards negative infinity, y will go towards negative infinity, or, pop, or yeah, mm -hmm. towards negative infinity. Okay. So I can go ahead and check my answer. Oh, it's going to make me draw. That's probably, nope, I don't want that. Okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use my handy calculator and go ahead and substitute these values in. So I have negative 5 to the 5th plus 18 to the negative 5 squared plus 10 to the negative, or 10 times negative 5 plus 1. That's negative 2,724. Well, that's fun. Okay, so negative 4 to the 5th plus 18 to the negative 4 squared plus 10 to the negative 4 plus 1, or 10 times negative 4. That's negative 7, 7, 5. Okay, and then negative 3. So I have negative 3 to the 5th plus 18 times negative 3 squared plus 10 times negative 3 plus 1. Oopsie. It gives me negative 1, 10. Okay. And I have negative 2 to the 5th plus 18 times negative 2 squared plus 10 times negative 2 plus 1 it gives me 21. Okay. And then I get uh, negative 1 to the 5th fifth power plus 18 times negative 1 squared plus 10 times negative 1 plus 1 is 8. Okay, 0, 0 plus 0 plus 0 gives me 1. Okay, and then I have 1 to the fifth, so 1 plus 18 plus 10 plus 1 is 30. Okay, then I have 2 to the 5th plus 18 times 2 squared plus 10 times 2 plus 1 gives me 125. Okay. Uh, 3 to the 5th plus 18 times 3 squared plus 30 plus 1 gives me 436. Four to the fifth plus 18 times four squared plus 40 plus one gives me 1353. Okay, and then last one, five to the fifth plus 18 times five squared plus 50 plus one. Oops, that's a good one. Oops. 4 to the oh wait, 5 to the 5th plus 18 times 5 squared plus 50 plus 1. 3. Six, two, six. There, roughly, somewhere. Negative one, negative eight's there. One thirty is up here. Okay. So I know it's going to do this, like this. It looks something like this, something weird like that. So there's my points. That's kind of what it looks like. It's not the best drawing in the world, but it's close. Uh, consider the polynomial function f of x equals x to the fifth plus 18x squared plus, plus 1. Um, find the average rate of change over the interval 0, 2. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in my values for 0. So I get 1 there. That means that point is 0, 1. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for 2. So 2 to the 5th 
that's 18 times 2 squared plus 10 times 2 plus 1 gives me 125. So I get 2, 125. Okay, so I'm going to take 125 minus 1 and I'm going to divide that. 125, 125 minus 1 divided by 125. Okay, so I get 125 minus 1, which equals 124, and I'm going to divide that by 2 minus 0. 124 divided by 2 equals, <laughs> that's the average rate of change. So how can you sketch a graph of the polynomial function f from a verbal description? So f of x is positive on the intervals negative infinity to negative 4 and negative 1 to 4. f of x is negative on the intervals negative 4 to negative 1 and 4 to infinity. f of x is decreasing on the intervals negative infinity to negative 2.67 and 2, neg or 2 to infinity. And then f of x is increasing on the interval negative 2.67 Okay. So, step one, we identify or estimate the x-intercepts. Okay, so the function values change sign at x equals negative 4, x equals negative 1, and x equals 4. So, you can right here, negative 4, negative 1, and 4. Step two, identify or estimate the turning points. So the function changes direction at x equals negative 2.67 and x equals 2. You give us those right here. Okay. Step three, evaluate the end behaviors. f of x is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 2.67 and f of x is decreasing on the interval 2 to, neg two to infinity. Okay, so I can see that it's increasing, decreasing. Then I can sketch the graph. So you can see. La, 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 la. All right, so example four, try it. Use the information below to sketch a graph of the polynomial function y equals f of x. So we know that f of x is positive on the intervals negative 2, negative 1, and 1, 2. And f of x is negative on the intervals negative infinity to negative 2, negative 1 to 1, and 2 to infinity. Okay, so from between negative 2 and 1, we know that it's positive. Okay. So I know that between, so I have a point that crosses here and one that crosses here, I know that it's positive between these two points, okay, and positive between one and two, so I'm gonna put two points there, right there for each one, okay, and I know it's positive between one and two. Okay. F of x is negative on the intervals from negative infinity to negative two, so I know it's negative down here, negative between negative one and one, so it's down here, and then two to infinity, so over here. I know that f of x is increasing from negative infinity to negative 1.5 and zero to 1.5. Okay, so I know that it's increasing, so I'm gonna go ahead and negative 1.5. So there's one, two, three, five's there, 1.5's there approximately. So f of x is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1.5 and from 0 to 1.5. And f is decreasing on the intervals negative 1.5 to 0 and 1.5 to infinity. And so looking at this, I can figure out my end behavior. So I know that it's increasing, so I know it's going up. I know it's negative. So that means it has an end behavior that goes this way. 
and behavior that goes this way. Okay. So when I'm going to draw my function, okay, I know it's positive from here to here. And it goes up to 1.5. Roughly there. Okay. I know from negative 1 to 1, it's it's below. And I know it's positive from 1 to 2. And then it's negative. Okay. I can see that it crosses at 2, negative 2 and 1. And then it crosses at 1 and 2. All right, interpreting a polynomial model. In science class, Abby mixes a fixed amount of baking soda with the different amounts of vinegar in a bottle capped by a balloon. She records the amount of time it takes the gases produced by the reaction to inflate the balloon. From her data, Abby created a function to model the situation. For X quarter cups of vinegar, it takes T of X equals negative 0.12 X cubed plus X squared minus 3.38 X plus 13.16 seconds to inflate the balloon. How long would it take to inflate the balloon with five quarter cups of vinegar? So using technology to sketch the graph, the y-intercept is about 13.2. Okay, so if I subbed in zero for each of these, I would get about 13.2. The x-intercept is about 6.6. .6. Techno when, use technology to determine the value of the function when x equals 5. When x equals 5, the value of the function is about 6.3. This means that if Abby uses 5 cups of vinegar, the balloon will inflate in approximately 6.3 seconds. Okay. So basically, all we did was we substituted in 5 for the x value, and that's what it gave us. So... For letter B, what do the X and Y intercepts of the graph mean in this context? Do these values make sense? So the X intercept is approximately 6.6, .6, which means that if 6.6 .6 cups of vinegar are used, the balloon would inflate in zero seconds. Okay. The Y intercept is approximately 13.2, which means that if no vinegar is used, the balloon will inflate in 13.2 seconds. Neither the x nor the y intercept makes sense in this context. Therefore, we must limit the domain and range when considering this model. Because if you don't put any vinegar in at all, the balloon probably won't inflate because it's actually this chemical reaction between the baking soda and the vinegar that causes the balloon to inflate. All right, so let's try it. Danielle is engineering a new brand of shoes. For X shoes sold in thousands, a profit of P of X equals negative 3X to the fourth plus 4X cubed minus 2X squared plus 5X plus $10 in 10 thousands will be earned. How much will be earned in profit for selling 1,000 shoes? Okay, so remember for X shoes sold in thousands, okay? So in order to figure this out, I'm looking for a thousand shoes, which is really like saying X equals one because for X shoes sold in thousands, okay? So if I substitute one in, so negative three times one to the fourth plus four times one cubed, minus two times one squared plus five plus 10 gives us about 14. So 14, remember we have to translate that back to thousands. So 14 times 1,000 would give me 140,000. So I substituted one in because one represents $1,000 or 1,000 shoes. Then multiplied 
my answer. by 10,000 because it's $10,000. So Danielle will earn $140,000 for selling 1,000 shoes. Okay. What do the X and Y intercepts of the graph mean in this context? Do these values make sense? So if I look at my graph, because I actually did graph it on the calculator, Hang on, stop presenting real fast. So you can actually see this. Okay. So there's my graph. Okay, so if I hit the trace button, the very bottom it says x equals zero, y equals 10. So my y intercept is 10. And then I, oops, that's far. My x-intercept is about 2. Okay, so y is 10, x is 2. Okay, so we said x is 2 and y equals 10. So my x-intercept is 2 and my y-intercept is 10. So we remember that x represents the number of shoes sold per thousand. Okay? And the y values represents the profit that they'll make in 10,000, worth $10,000. Okay. So since the approximate x-intercept, so if I look at the calculator, the approximate x-intercept was negative 0 0.86 and 1, 1 1.9. So there actually are two intercepts. So, oops. Okay. So negative anything doesn't make sense because we can't have a negative. So negative 0 0.86 does not make sense in this context because we can't make a negative number of shoes or we can't sell them. 1.9 does make sense because it is possible that costs will equal the revenue when 1,900 pairs of shoes are sold. Okay, So basically when it gets to that point on the x value where the y value was zero, at that point you're not making any money. Okay. So the y-intercept is 10. So this does not make sense because profit cannot be earned when there is no product being sold. So again, that x value is zero. That means that's the highest profit if you don't sell any shoes. Well, if you're not selling any shoes, you can't make a profit. All right, so concept summary. A polynomial function is a function whose rule is either a monomial or a sum of monomials. Okay, so the turning points are function values where they change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Relative minimum is the changes from increasing to decreasing and the relative maximum is the changes from decreasing to increasing. So n behavior depends on the degree of the polynomial and the sign of its leading coefficient. So if it's odd, and the coefficient is positive, that it has negative to positive. If it's even and positive, uh, both ends go up. If it's odd and negative, you have a negative slope. So 
this side's going up and this side's going down. If it's even and negative, both are going down. Memorize this. I don't tell people to memorize stuff really often. You want to memorize this end behavior. This will help you a lot. Um, not just in this unit, but if you go on to pre-calculus, AP Calc, calculus, any, any higher level maths, memorize this. Okay, this will help you instantly be able to tell end behaviors for any polynomial function. Okay. And that is the end of lesson one.